Because reading is what? Fundamental! Yeah, you know it. Hello, and welcome to this exclusive edition of Reading is Fundamental, brought to you by RPDR UK fans. With me, Frankie Fan, giving you some Frankie realness today. Now, Pride Month may be coming to an end soon, but that doesn't mean the party has to stop. Usually all over the world, Pride events are about to take place throughout the summer. But this year, with most events being cancelled due to COVID-19, we'll have to find a way to celebrate in a different way this year. So why not make this year's Pride all about education and take the time to learn and remind ourselves the true meaning of Pride? Rather than just running around the streets half naked, really drunk, shouting about Lady Gaga and looking for dick. Not that that isn't fun. Although it would be Britney Spears for me, not Lady Gaga. Which brings me on to the book, because after all, this is a book review. <laughs> it's Pride, the story of the LGBTQ equality movement by Matthew Todd. Now I've read and reviewed a Matthew Todd book before, and let me tell you, it was bloody fantastic. So I was very excited to get my hand on a copy of this book and give it a good read. Now, as the title kind of says, it's kind of like, the sort of the history story of Pride, and it's packed full of information. It starts by covering some topics where it talks about a time when homosexuality was a criminal offence. Which is fucking stupid, wrong. And then obviously the book is going to cover the birth of Pride and the night at the Stonewall Inn in 1969. Which led to more protests, which eventually led to the celebration we know as Pride today. Now as you should know, it's thanks to so many people who were there that night that we owe so much to today. People like Marsha P. Johnson and Stormy Delavery, who actually is rumoured through the first punch at Stonewall. Oh, she was a nice butch lesbian of colour. And if you were looking for an icon, or a daikon as my lesbian friends would call her, then you've definitely found one in Stormy because she was it. And I mean, Marsha P. Johnson. Do I really need to tell you who she was? Trans legend. I mean, if you don't know who these women are, I'm absolutely outraged, first of all. Do your homework, children. These are important figures in our history. And it's all right just knowing their names, but it's so much more important to learn about them and what they did exactly, because they were fierce. And it's not just those two who are fierce and fought. This book has so many stories from and about many people that have meant and done such a lot for the LGBTQ movement. Are a huge part, a huge part of the reason why us gay people today have a lot more freedom than they had back then. Also, a little side note, we're not totally free. And all the fighting from over the years, from activists and protesters, which has got us the rights that we have today, could all be just taken away at the drop of a hat. Which is why it's so important to know your history. Do your research and vote, goddammit! People fought for your freedom. The least you can do is learn about them and do your part by voting to help keep the legacy of all these phenomenal people who have fought for our freedom alive. Reading this book and looking at all the things that LGBTQ people had to go through and have fought for and the way that they were treated, which was awful, makes you feel so grateful for what we have today. But it's also quite terrifying to think that this history, which actually really wasn't that long ago, and with the current state of like the political climate in the world, it's so easy to imagine us regressing back to a time where homosexuality is illegal. And this isn't just a history essay, because people, this happened, and it could easily happen again. Which is why it's so important that we continue with and keep pride. Anyway, the book also has some brilliant contributors, and one of the ones I really enjoyed reading the most was um, a page by Jonathan Blake. Now this is something I learned reading this book. Jonathan was one of the very first people to be diagnosed with HIV in the UK. He started showing symptoms in about 1982 when no one really even knew what HIV was then. And he's still alive today! I think that's incredible. Think of all those people that died in the 80s from AIDS because no one really knew what it was and there wasn't very good treatment. Not like we have today. So somehow Jonathan has gone through and survived all that. And I don't want to spoil it too much by telling you everything that he's written on the page because you're going to have to read it if you want to know about his story. The book does talk a lot about HIV and the AIDS crisis in the 80s. I mean, it's a big part of our history. And how it was seen as a gay cancer and we were sometimes referred to as gay terrorists. David Furnish, who is the chair of the Elton John AIDS Foundation, is a contributor and he talks about how over the years they've managed to raise $400 million, well over $400 million, to help HIV related programs and how far we've come since the outbreak in the 80s. But the book doesn't just focus on pride as in like just the parade and the protests, but like pride in our culture, such as television shows that broke boundaries, pride in literature, which is obviously something I'm quite interested in. It gives you some lists of books with um, gay themes. Oh, and movies! It provides an LGBTQ film guide with lists such as the 10 greatest trans films, 10 feel good films for lesbians, 10 great movies with LGBTQ characters of colour, and so on. 
It talks about art. Oh, I learned about the David Hockney painting that sold for $90 million. The portrait of an artist, Paul with two figures picture, which is, I believe, the most expensive painting sold at auction by a living artist. I didn't know that. See, education, learning. It's a good book. <laughs> oh, and it's got a lovely pass in it from Nan Golding, who's a contributor to the book. She talks about her really good friend David in it, and. The way she talks about him, it's just so beautiful. Oh, I'd love someone to talk about me like that one day. I better make some friends first. And what I like about this book is it's quite a big book. So it's like one of those coffee table books, which I love because it means it's full of beautiful photos. And lastly, I want to talk about the introduction. It's kind of an odd thing to do at the end of the video, but hey ho, I'm not exactly conventional. The reason I've left it to last is the very last paragraph in the introduction just felt so powerful and relevant today. Not just because of pride, but also because of the Black Lives Matter movement. I shall read it to you. Those who wish to control others or have an interest in the status quo will tell you that protest never achieves anything. I hope this book assures you that protest can achieve a great deal and that when people act together, they have a true power. And that sometimes using that power is absolutely necessary. Words by Matthew Todd. Like I said, I reviewed another book by Matthew Todd called Straight Jacket, which is a phenomenal book and everyone should read it, especially if you're gay, you definitely need to read it. If you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link in the description below for that video. Or you can find it at frankiefan.com in the reading is fundamental section, along with all my other book reviews. Now I'll leave you with this, even though I've kind of already mentioned it. This year's Pride isn't gonna be the normal celebrations that we like with no events really happening around the world. So instead of doing nothing, let's make 2020 Pride about education. Even if you only learn one thing about LGBTQ history, at least you've learned something. Because ignorance is a killer, so educate yourself and learn. There are reasons that we still have Pride Day, and it's not just so you can party with your friends. I mean, it's a good excuse to have a party and celebrate with your friends, but that's not the reason that we have Pride. This book is a real fantastic tool for anyone who wants to learn more about our community, our history, and where we're potentially going. So for this Pride, be proud, live proud, Read this book, educate yourself, and learn something. Instead of getting sunburn on your ass because you've got to put sun cream on it when you're partying with your friends during Pride. Well, actually, it was at Nudist Beach. It wasn't actually a Pride parade. But it was Pride at the time. Anyway, happy Pride Month, everybody. Here's to many more. I love you all. And that's it. Thank you so, so much for watching. Now you know what I'm gonna say. Make sure you subscribe to the RPDR UK Fans YouTube channel and check out all of the social media accounts, which is RPDR UK Fans across all platforms we use. And also make sure you check out the brand new website, rpdrukfans.co.uk. It's the home for everything RuPaul's Drag Race UK fans. Drag news, upcoming shows, podcasts, merch. It's all there, so go and take a peek. And if you want to see more of me, Frankie Fan, then check out and follow me on my social media, which is at the Frankie Fan across all platforms. Well, the ones that I use anyway. Thanks! Thanks.